Hello everybody and welcome to my channel. We're here with the third episode. I ain't got no time to waste because I have about four episodes that I still have to recap and then I want to start Love in Paradise. I'm not playing with you guys, okay? Anyway guys, let's get right into this recap. So where we ended last week's episode, we were still at the Colombian party and they have some special guests that they have invited to this party. Macy was happy to see the experts because she was scared it was going to be Farrah Ashley or Janelle and she says the dynamic of their group right now is perfect. She doesn't know how it would change if people were added to the house. Dr. Mike says, I don't know the rest of you. You don't know Micaiah. And Dr. Mike introduces themselves as the coaches. He says he specializes in couples and sex therapy. Micaiah is a relationship expert. What's her qualifications? I'm curious. Anyway, Taylor thinks that the coaches will be very good for them. She feels like they're going to do some serious work with her and Corey. Dr. Mike says his specialty is to help everyone to dig deep, whether it's childhood trauma, past wounds of their relationships. He knows if they can heal the internal wounds, it'll take everyone's relationships to the next level. Micaiah says she's there to compliment Dr. Mike. While Dr. Mike is doing the trauma work, Micaiah is going to meet them in the present. I just want to know, was this really party material? To be like, like they just partying, shaking it, you know what? And you know, all these dances and stuff, they're drinking, they're having fun. And now we're doing a counseling session? Child, these, these coaches could have came the next morning or the next afternoon. They did not have to come the night of the party. Jade says Micaiah comes in with that positive vibe that automatically makes you feel like you want to tell her all of your secrets. I didn't get that vibe, but okay, Jade. Dr. Mike says the reason why they're doing this in a group setting is because the power of the group can be so beneficial to that healing. Micaiah says that they both want the couples to leave knowing full sure well that they are the masters of their relationships. Jade says the coaches are ideal for what the couple's family reunion is. So Dr. Mike says, and that time is right now. And Kay says now, hell no. <laughs> so exercise number one, everyone is told to go with the coaches. So Corey says, we're just having a party. Everybody's having fun. And now we got to do a workshop. Taylor says everyone goes outside and they see these tiki torches. They see pink X's on the ground and Corey says they're about to get eliminated. He's watched enough Survivor knows exactly how this is going to go. Corey says to Taylor, the target is already on them. They were arguing tonight. He says he's not trying to get voted off first. Micaiah says they talked about digging deep. They do not yet know their level of commitment to themselves or the group. So Dr. Mike says what you have to do first as a couple, go to the X. I'm literally going to be digging up puzzle pieces. And this puzzle is going to be a heart shape that they're all going to put together. Cheyenne says she's trying to be a team player, but it's like, it's been a long day. I just got my nails done. You dig in the dirt. Jade says that she is the head bee in charge. She says she handles a lot of stuff at home and she wants Sean to sometimes jump in. That practice was the opportunity, the practice of the puzzles it was their opportunity to work on that and for Sean to step it up. Get it, babe. Get it, babe. Lori was coaching Taylor and Cheyenne says that is really the dynamic that she usually sees with Corey is he's coaching her. So the first couple that ended up getting that puzzle piece was Kate and Tyler and once they all figured out the strategy Macy was really taking charge of the strategy thing how to get everything to look you know as one whole piece as a group. So Sean said that he liked the fact that they were working together and not breaking off as individual couples. They were all together so they worked together as a family. Well, they figured out the puzzle that was a snore fest to have to watch MTV. Akaya commends everybody on the fact that they dug in and really did that challenge and they addressed the task and she thanks everybody for their enthusiasm and their willingness to be committed to this process. Dr. Mike says the power of the group is what these exercises in the next two weeks are all about. Yeah, I feel the strength in this circle. All right. Gives me that soul. We can conquer anything. Oh. Corey says that he's yelling about the power of the group, but in his mind, he really is not fully there. He says him and Taylor just got into an argument and he just hopes that after this workshop, they can get a one-on-one -on -one session with the coaches. Taylor says the first day wasn't a good representation of their relationship and she's a bit nervous about what's in store for them. So Cheyenne says the first day was awesome. They partied, they ate, they did the workshop. Now the real work is going to start. 
they take group picks and that's about it it's the next morning in Colombia and Tyler says he's not used to all this freedom he's the one that usually gets the kids ready in the morning to the bus stop every morning etc Kate what are you doing ma'am you're not helping like you you don't have a full-time job right i mean team mom the next chapter ain't really been popping so what have you been doing lady tyler says no one is around talking to him it's just him in his head tyler says he needs to learn a spanish word a day to build up his vocabulary Levantate. i'm gonna go practice my levante day word and get kate up levante day what levante day what is that? it means time to get up just leave me alone so kate says she's over here on vacation she doesn't have the kids with her and tyler's in there shouting random spanish words at her she says how do you say annoying in spanish tyler decides to bring macy breakfast in bed and i guess none of you ladies are <laughs> i guess none of you ladies are morning people because she said leave me alone sean is gonna ask tyler if he wants to go for a run and tyler said is that what you're doing and sean says yes you want to go and tyler says no <laughs> macy asks taylor what does he hope to get out of this and he really just wants one-on-one -on -one time without the kids you know with macy macy says what her and taylor need to work on the most would be prioritizing each other she feels like this will be a restart button and taylor says that he's super excited to get to know everybody more and macy says that the bunch the group they are blast and they're pretty easy it's a great group she says taylor says to be given the opportunity around other couples that are going through the same exact thing as them will be a huge growth for them and it will give them time to reflect it'll make them better parents and better partners macy says to taylor that she's happy he's here so corey comes in the kitchen to get coffee for taylor while tyler and kate and sean are there and corey says taylor needs her coffee or it's going to be a long day and kate asks how taylor is doing today kate don't you think you should be asking corey how he is today i mean he was the one that was drunk the other night kate says that she doesn't know what's going on between them Corey says Taylor doesn't like this type of stuff. Corey says he dragged Taylor in there and he says he's like this big personality, but that's not her. So it's been a struggle. He says that Taylor misses the girls a lot, their little girls. And Kate says she gets it. They miss their kids a lot and things are hard, but sometimes it's good to get away. Kate says that she can relate to Taylor's anxiety and how being away from the kids can trigger that. And Kate says she hopes for Taylor's sake that she realizes that they're here to support her and be friends to her. So Corey says to Kate about Taylor that she already has an identity as a mother, but now it's time to figure out who Taylor is now. Corey, who Taylor is now, is a mother, okay? That is her identity, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that being your complete identity in addition to other things because that's what we are. So Tyler says that you really can drown in the parent role. He says that Corey and Taylor jumped into that whole parenting role super fast. Started dating when Corey found out he was a dad to Ryder and they really didn't get a chance to date and just be themselves. Tyler feels that they could spend a lot of time figuring out who they are outside of being parents. Corey says it's gonna be great this two weeks for him and Taylor to sit down and talk. And Tyler says, yes, use whatever the coaches have to give you. And hopefully the couple sessions should be helpful. Corey says he really wants this experience to be positive. Says the first day they both got upset, it's not always gonna be rainbow sunshine, okay? And they have a lot to work on. And what what, are they, what does he always end everything with? That's why we're here. That's why they're there. I'm tired of saying that. Corey says they're gonna have a better day than they did yesterday since they have a session with Makaya soon. So now we get into this counseling session with Makaya. So Makaya wants to get into what happened last night. She says she heard that it was a little emotional. So she wants them to share the experience and let her know what happened. So Taylor says, you know, she has a lot of anxiety and coming there, just coming there gave her anxiety. So she says Corey and her started to argue. She says it happened because Corey kept getting mad. And Taylor says when Corey drinks, he keeps going and going. Taylor says that she tries to calm him down, but he doesn't like to hear that. So Micaiah says she can imagine that feels like walking through a landmine. Corey admits to having anger issues and Corey, alcohol cannot be helping your anger issues. I'm just saying. And I'm really surprised that Micaiah in this entire conversation maybe she's gonna do it later i don't know but she has not 
once. Ask Corey, do you think you have a drinking problem? I feel like that would be my first question. Do you feel you have a freaking drinking problem? Because I personally think that if Taylor is saying every time he drinks, that means you drink often. Not like me. I might drink every 10 years. So you can't even say I'm a drinker. Corey says that he likes to bottle up his emotion and then it triggers. It gets triggered is what he meant to say. And he's like, why the hell are you getting this upset over something like that? So he gets upset over little, little things. And he says that it goes back to his childhood and how he was raised. Corey says that his dad was in jail and he was raised by his mom. And Corey says his mom was in a messed up relationship and he gets emotional about it. Corey starts to get upset and he starts to get tears in his eyes. How? I don't know how much I can take of a man crying because that crap tears me up because when a man cries, men don't cry often in front of people, right? And you know, when you see a man crying, you know that he is seriously hurting. Okay. So that really hurts me. So anyway, Micaiah says, if the both of you have different understandings as to what respect means, that could also impact the relationship. And then Taylor goes on to explain her childhood. She had a great childhood. Okay, she's always seen her parents together. She's seen her parents in love her entire life. So Micaiah says very different upbringings have a different understanding of what love and what the world looks like. And Corey says he came down here with a purpose. He's going to say that a lot. And I'm going to tell you right now, I ain't going to keep saying it. And I'm a little irritated because I have like 14 pages of notes and AI could not summarize this for me properly. So I'm sitting here literally having to read 14 pages of notes and I'm not even joking with you people. Okay, I'm not, I'm not joking with y'all. This is what I do for this freaking channel. Corey says that he wants wants to give his everything towards this relationship. Makaya says they have a lot to learn from one another about how to create their own relationship dynamic. She says they get to decide by their own rules what works and what doesn't. So Makaya says it brings us up to the story right now. Makaya goes and she talks about them meeting on a television show. And Taylor says, yeah. Makaya says that's not the typical setup. Corey says he knew that Taylor was his. You knew she was yours before y'all met. How is that even possible? Corey tells Taylor that he was all about her. Micaiah asks, how was life off camera? And Taylor says they were up and down in the beginning. So Taylor, um, I hate to ask the real questions here, but um, I know I'm not Micaiah and I'm not um, Dr. Mike or anything, but um, if you and Corey were up and down in the beginning, what makes you think at some point, like six years later, that it eventually was going to get on a steady, even kill? When did you think that was going to happen? Ma'am, come on now. Come on now. Get it together girl you're a beautiful girl you're a very beautiful girl i know you got brain but dealing with um dealing with Corey, i can't tell okay i'm just being honest dealing with him dealing with him and being in a relationship with him for that long and then you keep having babies by this fool and do you think he gonna marry you think gonna marry you girl and I, i'll be honest with you you don't want to marry him you do not want to marry Corey. Corey will never get married okay he's the dude who's gonna have all these kids by you you might not even be his last baby mama if i'm being real taylor says that they were making up to break up and makaya asked what kept causing you all to break up? Taylor said Corey wanted to be single. Corey admits to having commitment issues. He says that he's never been great with commitment. Taylor says that she's very committed when she's with somebody, she is with them. Corey says that's what he loves about her. He says he doesn't have to worry about her cheating or whatever behind his back. And Micaiah asks Taylor, do you ever worry about Corey? And Taylor says yes. Makaya asks, is it because of the makeup breakup past or is there something else? Taylor says it's because of the past. And Taylor admits that six years ago, when they first started dating, Corey cheated on her. I can't believe I'm hearing that he cheated, but yeah, this was six years ago. He hasn't cheated since apparently. Why are you still here? I mean, that was early in, on in the beginning. You had nothing invested in this fool. I'd have left. That's me. So I'm not really sure why you was like, you know what? Sure, I'll stay with you. Y'all had nothing invested in that relationship at that point. It would have been super easy for you to leave. But here we are. Two kids later even after the cheating and i suppose you thought he was gonna change taylor said that she's been cheated on in all of her relationships so it's become something normal to you girl don't ever get accustomed to being cheated on ever in your life corey says that yes that was six years ago and taylor says that it was before the kids micaiah clarifies that this was the only time corey cheated and correct it was the only time he cheated so corey says that he can see that cheating situation takes a toll on taylor micaiah says that needs some 
some attention. So Taylor says she doesn't trust Corey when he drinks. She says she doesn't trust the way Corey acts when he drinks. She doesn't trust his friends. They be having strippers around him. And Corey says his friends are cool. They're just in the street. And Micaiah says, but you're in a relationship. You're not in the street. And Corey says he never does anything though. Micaiah says what you're doing to Taylor hurts her. If she says she has a problem with you being out there drinking and all that and you're still doing it, you're basically saying I don't care about your feeling. Well, Corey says to Taylor, I always come home to you. And Taylor says you are belligerent every time and that's what scares me. Taylor states that his state of mind being barely coherent and then him doing something is her worry. And Corey says he wants to be the best man he can be but at the same time he wants to be able to hang out with his friends and he likes to have some drink sometimes. So Micaiah says, so Corey, when Taylor says it hurts me that you go out and that you get super drunk because I don't know what you're capable of doing in that state and you choose to go and do that thing that she does not like, it sends the message that you do not care. Corey admits that he's selfish, which wow, you know, most people cannot admit that they're selfish. So I got to give you that. I got to give you some points right there, Corey. You can admit that you have an anger issue, number one, and you've also admitted that you're selfish. Corey says that he is selfish, but he doesn't know how to change that. And Micaiah says, well, you admit it and I'm surprised you said it before I did. Corey says he doesn't know how to change that because it's just not him. And Micaiah says by making a decision to be different. Micaiah says, I can see that you don't want to lose parts of yourself. And Corey says he feels he always has to keep his wings down. Which wings? Your demon wings or your angel wings? Which one? Corey says that he's like a butterfly that has to keep his wings down when he's around Taylor. So Taylor says that she sees it differently being a mom. That's her world. And Corey says of Taylor that she's an amazing mother and he says that he wants Taylor to find herself. Corey, let me tell you something. If Taylor ever finds herself, you gonna be outside on the doorstep with your stuff in a suitcase because she ain't gonna want you. I'm gonna tell you right now. Once she realizes her worth, buddy, you gonna be co-parenting and not living in the same house and not in a relationship just like you are with Cheyenne. Child, you be on your third baby mama. Okay? Okay? That's where you're gonna be. You gonna be outside permanently or with somebody else or at your place wherever, but you ain't gonna be with um you ain't gonna be with taylor i'm just saying so corey says to taylor if you want to be great you want to be exceptional then girl you gotta drop corey but anyway he says if you want to be great or exceptional you need to do exceptional and great things because you know obviously being a mom is not exceptional and great corey you don't know how you sound right now okay, i'm glad micaiah picked up on it micaiah says what part of motherhood is not exceptional both of you are doing exceptional work but when there's wording like that how it sounds to taylor is you're not doing enough micaiah i'm really glad you said that all right so micaiah says it's like you're saying you're just a mom and micaiah asks taylor how it feels to hear that and taylor says it hurts so corey apologizes that hearing that hurts that's how he phrased his apology i'm sorry if, if hearing that hurts you that's not an apology are you heartily sorry for what you said and and you know you'll choose your words better next time is what you should have said Corey says that he's going to work on it. Micaiah says she's really happy to see their level of commitment to one another. She says to Corey that she's happy to see that he's willing. And Taylor says she felt really good after the session because she felt like someone was hearing and understanding her relationship with Corey. She says that she thinks this is a really good start to figuring out what their problems are, but there's more they really need to work on. And it seems like those issues are pretty clear to me, um, Taylor. You got some baggage and I don't know how much he weighs. I wish I knew how much he weighs so I can be like, you got some 230 pound baggage girl but i don't know how much i don't know how much that guy weighs and i ain't looking it up because i'm lazy corey is a narcissist i know people love to use the word narcissist for everything Ugh. but he really is a narcissist like he admits that he's selfish he admits that it's all about him he admits that he puts himself above he's a narcissist and i don't know if narcissists can change i mean i don't know i've never met a narcissist that's changed have y'all let me know in the comment section if you have because i have never met one corey says that his number one takeaway is that he needs to have a better understanding of the value of their relationship Corey says a few years ago when he cheated, he could see the pain on how Taylor still holds that against him. Corey says when he goes out with his friends, he could definitely change a little bit. Jade and Sean got an offer on the house and uh, Sean says while he was in substance abuse treatment two years ago, Jade bought a house and he says they recently bought another house so they put the old house on the market. It's only been on the market for three months but they just got word that they got an offer. Sean says while he was in substance abuse treatment two years ago jade bought a house and he says they recently bought another house so they put the old house on the market it's only been on the market for three months but they just
just got word that they got an offer. So Jade says a lot of what she's invested in her money is tied up in this property. She says the profit of selling this will pay off the wedding. You know, that could have been $45,000 you just have saved, girl. But anyway, not my business. I ain't your financial planner. Jade runs to accept the offer on her laptop. She says it feels so good to get the house sold and she says that house was her first baby and it was the first house she ever owned, her first project. And she says she completely did it solo. Sean tells everybody. Sean tells everybody in the house about the offer and everybody is excited and probably drinking because they always drink it in this damn house. So Cheyenne is here with Macy and Kate and she's saying tonight they have plans, more plans, more corny freaking plans. Jade says they're going downtown and they're going to meet with the coaches and Jade says a little bit of party but also a little bit of love, relationship and yap yap. She didn't say yap yap, I did but y'all know how I am. I be paraphrasing. I will never tell y'all exactly what they said word for word because that ain't why y'all watch me. You want word for word? Go watch MTV child. Anyway, Tyler says Jade and Cheyenne said that they were going out tonight. They about to have some fun. Kate says they're all hanging outside, drinking some drinks, and out of nowhere, here comes this big trolley bus. What do you call those, um, what do you call those buses that are like in California that be riding on those rat on those tracks, girl? I don't know. It's like a trolley. I said trolley. I'm so crazy. It's trolley bus, and exactly, it, it looked exactly like a trolley. So everybody is now on this party trolley and there's drinks there's dancing balloons streamers a stripper pole i could have went forever and never saw jade on that stripper pole and i pray to god i never see it again well, y'all really trying to make me throw up doing this recap okay I, there's so many things i could stand without seeing so macy says it feels really good to be out and about it's like her own little bubble of fun and they're ready to party cheyenne says they're about to pull up to their destination mtv y'all have these people partying and then y'all throw in a freaking counseling session is very annoying and it does not go and it makes no sense now we get to this corny hornier than corny time to make them and that's where you got the title of this damn episode by the way just to let you know viewer discretion is advised because this crap is super corny coaches are there jade says everyone is turned up thinking they had a good time they're thinking they're walking into the club they're about to drop it low they're about to you know and no it's another freaking workshop tyler says we just got done partying come in here and there's pillows all around the circle like kumbaya and all that are we doing yoga corey says what is this i'm here to have a good time with my lady but we want to work on all these deep rooted issues so he He's glad the coaches are here. So Tyler asks if they can take off their shoes. Funky foot barnacles. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Sean says that he's not taking off his shoes. I'm not taking off my shoes. Sean, you got ugly feet? You got funky feet? Child, you really was adamant about not taking off your shoes. Golly, that's real suspicious. Makaya welcomes everybody, says that they may be hot and uncomfortable. And this evening, Dr. Mike and Makaya are going to make them, I, I do not want to say this, the things that women do when they're in labor starts with an M and ends with an N when they're in pain they're about to have that baby okay that's what these two are gonna make everybody do and uh i don't want to hear it i really don't i really don't you know i really hope you guys appreciate my recaps because this was very painful this was one of the most painful episodes i've ever had to witness and i just wanted to poke both my eyes out and rip my ears off because i didn't want to hear it either okay didn't want to see it didn't want to hear it dr mike starts to talk about <laughs> drive it says that through the lifespan it changes when you fall in love uh, it's different than when you know you're not in that stage anymore when you first start and then you know after a while it ebbs down to a little lower level dr mike says later in life it is impossible for your body to get grounded and have that drive in the same phase of life dr mike and makaya are going to be making these people moan I did not want to say that word okay when i just said that word i just got like the chills and then when i say i get chills that's not a good thing okay it's a bad thing so sean says out loud what i'm thinking Sounds Stupid. Taylor says this workshop is about getting your out and how to improve your intimate life. And she says she's glad they're doing this. Girl, I'd be mortified. I don't know about being glad. I would be mortified in front of all those damn people. And Cheyenne says, she I don't know if I want to moan with them. <laughs> Cheyenne be saying some stuff that be cracking me up. Makaya's over here laughing. She can't even hold her laugh in after Cheyenne. So Sean says, Stupid. Jay says that she was keeping an open mind and Sean was like, this is weird. And Sean said, 
his mom is gonna be watching this jay says she could feel how uncomfortable sean was sean says he feels like it was worded weird we're gonna make y'all moan like what i guess maybe the point was to make y'all uncomfortable macy says sean is definitely not happy about this and sean says he knows he needs to step out of his comfort zone but he doesn't feel open talking about his Life. So Dr. Mike says, I promise you, you're going to take something away if you just keep an open mind, especially as you guys are preparing to get married. Sean says he's trying, but this just sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, whatever the hell he said. <laughs> Sean is not about this life, okay? And he's ready to walk the hell out. Sean is mad as hell and he's not gonna take it anymore. He's two seconds from walking out that dough, okay? Cheyenne says that Sean is extremely uncomfortable during this workshop. She says she feels like he's gonna walk out at any time. And Cheyenne says that she hopes Sean realizes that this is supposed to help them and their relationship. So Jade says Sean is at the point of being defensive and Sean says he's ready to yeet up out of there. <laughs> <laughs> he ready to get the hell up out of there and he says he just wants to walk away he's not open-minded he says this sean says he's not open-minded and he doesn't want to be there and sean again mentions his mom is going to be watching this like national tv is going to be watching this jade says that sean is very traditional and likes to keep their bedroom time private makaya says let's start from the bottom this workshop is set up to take us phase by phase she says you can lean into the power of the group i'm tired of the power of the group what is this a cult anyway Corey is standing there laughing so damn hard and he's making me laugh sean says he can see how upset jade is and sean you gonna get it later she gonna get you when y'all are alone i hope you know that but um he says that she was getting uncomfortable because he was mad and jade just thought it was making them look bad so he said he's gonna try and stay and participate they do a back-to-back -back exercise with their partners where they try to hug each other from the back and tyler says he gets the message they're trying to say like when you're back to back it's hard to connect with your partner now they're facing each other the couples are going to look at one another they're going to do a staring contest for one minute jade says to sean you don't look happy sean says because i'm drunk and i don't want to be here jade says that her and sean they're not seeing eye to eye about the activity okay sean you're starting to annoy me now because you're whining a little too damn much okay i'm drunk and i don't want to be here he's annoying me a little bit i want you to get out of your comfort zone even if it's not something ideal it's like do it with me and macy says she can definitely tell that jade is a little upset that sean is upset and macy says we're all very uncomfortable right now so they all have to do a minute of staring and child that's a long time so sean says to jade we're so meeting about sex when we don't have it like it's on jade says she doesn't think her and sean had the conversation about the slowing down of but he's made comments and it was rude. She says she's happy Sean's participating, but she's not happy that he's exploding with the rude comments. And Jade tells Sean that he's making her so uncomfortable. Sean says he's been uncomfortable since he came through the door. Makaya says, tell me how that felt once their minute was up. Sean says that he was receiving from that exercise from Jade and her stare was to chill the F out. <laughs> That's exactly the message she was trying to send too, by the way, because you needed to chill the hell out. And Jade says from Sean, she got, why are we sitting here and talking about and we're not even having it? Everyone's shocked. Jade says that it's hurtful to her. It was so mean and it hurt her feelings. And Jade said that it made her pissed off and made her upset and sad. So Sean says that he had to jump out of his head to even participate. And now she's mad macy says she feels like every committed relationship will cross that issue this the low issue at some point y'all just have to talk about it so jade says outside it seems like all of you guys are so great and so happy and her and sean are over here about to get married and their stuff is just not together so jay says it's making them feel insecure they're asking themselves if they're making the right choice zach says nobody's perfect macy says you know relationships are like a roller coaster you just got to do it together and jade says she sees where the coaches are coming from about power within the group because when you have issues it's good to get that support from other people makaya wants the ladies to their partner child i can't even put some of these clips on here i don't need youtube demonetizing my channel I need my little $20, so I'm not really trying to see this. And if y'all want to see what exactly they were doing, y'all can go to mtv.com or you can go on Prime, whatever, wherever y'all watch y'all show. And they're literally and I'm about to throw up. Dr. Mike asks, how much would you like to be getting intimate with your mate? Tyler said daily, Tyler, you need to sit down where you're already sitting. You need to stand up, go for a walk, go for a ride, go get a hobby, something. Daily? Daily? There's people that don't work full time, okay? Macy says that's what she wants. She says she's a very 
driven person and I didn't really need to learn these things about my Macy I like Macy probably the most out of all of them and girl I did not need to know that but we're all adults but that ain't the point we can be adults and I don't need to know all your business okay Cheyenne says that Macy has been very open about her drive she says that she never would have thought that Taylor says that him and Macy are definitely happier when they're having a healthy relationship Corey says him and Taylor have two to three times a week but when they do is very rushed it's very much a quickie. Quickies are okay sometimes, but to have a quickie every single time is like, okay, there's just no enrichment. There's no emotion. You're just really going through the motions, honestly. But Corey says that it's not like they get a whole night to themselves. Corey's like, damn, we got five minutes before these kids get up. And Corey says him and Taylor don't get to really be intimate. If they want to get married, it is the, now is the time for them to focus on them. Corey says that's something that they want to work on and find more time where it's just him and Taylor. Taylor says it's nice to hear that Corey is excited to work on things in their relationship. Cheyenne asks if the girls sleep in their bed. Taylor says yes, and that's the freaking problem. And I completely get it. You have a child with special needs. She's, you know, got a heart issue. So I'm not faulting you because you want to have her in your bed. God forbid something happens. You scare her heart might, you know, something might happen to her heart, whatever. I'm not faulting you for that, but that is a major reason why you guys really don't get private time. You got your babies in your bed, okay? Corey says Taylor's whole identity has been being a mom because, again, that is her identity, fool. That is her identity. Um, Corey says there can't be two kids in the bed with us. I agree. Just said that. Dr. Mike says to Jade and Sean, I have a feeling intimacy is not where you want it to be. Um, Dr. Mike, what gave you that idea? To me, it means reproduction in my head. Cheyenne says that she's shocked that Jade is saying that she doesn't want another baby. She says that she thinks Jade means she doesn't want another baby right now. Now we get this crazy confession that I never expected in all my life in the center of this video because, you know, I choose what I feel and what I deem to be the most important topic in a video and that is my title because that's what smart people do. Duh. <laughs> Why would I make a secondary topic my main title? That's dumb. <laughs> anyway, Jade makes a confession that for six entire months, half a mother freaking year. I could just make a confession. It's probably the last six months I've really been like holding out on him. So Jade says her pregnancy and labor was traumatic. She says she worked so hard to get where she wants to be physically. There's the wedding honeymoon they have all this stuff going on and she just doesn't want to be pregnant doing that and i i understand it mostly i understand the trauma the traumatic labor and delivery part one time was extremely traumatic for me macy says listening to jade and her fears of being pregnant she says that's a hard place to be and she feels for her and sean sean says hearing that makes him understand so much more and dr mike tells jade that she just gave sean something great by being honest sean apologizes for being selfish all the time he also says that made him feel really bad but he understands it and he is not mad at her he says he's ready whenever jade is jade feels like there's a lot of pressure on her and that pressure is not jade says that she associates pregnancy with feeling sad insecure lonely she says when she was pregnant sean was having a lot of problems and also after having chloe she just did not feel she did not recognize her body jade feels like she's done a lot of work in the last year kate asks jade if she's doing anything to prevent pregnancy and jade says just birth control but look what happened they had chloe while she was on birth control were you taking that birth control consistently ma'am were you on antibiotics did you have a backup plan ma'am because you know they do say birth control is not 100 percent, and you knew that going in makaya tells jade she knows that she's terrified but there are other ways to experience pleasure that don't include makaya says also think about scheduling girl what the hell are you talking about <laughs> <laughs> she just meant putting aside time to spend time with your spouse not as a task but as you know this is our time Corey says each workshop that he's done he's learned a little bit more about his partner and he's glad that he got the most and intimacy talk done dr mike tells everyone they opened up and they took a risk today macy says it's a struggle to make sure intimacy stays alive so she's really trying to take in the tools they're being given about keeping the spark alive dr mike gives huge props to sean and says isn't it interesting the person who really didn't want to be here the most got the most out of this workshop sean got communication out of this he says and although he was uncomfortable though he didn't want to be there it was an opportunity to open up to each other. Jade says at the end of the night, Sean opened up, which she's happy about, but she also feels like his emotions came out 
in a way that she did not like. So she feels there's still some things on her mind that she needs to discuss with him. So now everybody is back in the house. Casey says during the workshop, her and Taylor discuss certain things that they need from each other. She says now it's time to put it into action and practice. Jade gets a ding notification on her text and she says it's the realtor. They just came back and the prospective buyer countered their offer. Jade says her first house has been hanging over her head. They got this offer and now it's up in the air. The buyer isn't good with this and here they were thinking that they were going to close on the house. So she says they were this close and now almost poof, right? So Sean says it'll sell when it's meant to sell. It also, guys, has only been on the market for three months. So that's not bad. It's so hard doing voiceover. Jade says to Sean, you don't know how stressful all these responsibilities she has are. Sean says he understands. Jade says it's always on her plate because she's always the one dealing with it. Jade says she wants a partnership, but she feels like she hasn't had that for years. So my question to you, Jade, why are you marrying him if you haven't had a partnership for years? Girl, that don't make no damn sense. I hate to say it, but they have a very toxic relationship. They've been engaged a few times. This is not the first time they've been engaged. Jay says it was like she was doing everything and Sean was just trucking along behind her. Sean says he just wants to go to bed and he wants this day to be over with. I want this recap to be over with. She's mad because Cheyenne told her at the little group thing that we haven't had for six months jade what crack of your behind hole did you get this from are you senile are you going on onset alzheimer's at your age because we clearly heard you say with your own mouth no help from cheyenne that you guys hadn't had in six months and we know it's true now that you're backtracking we know it's true because at the time that you said it sean confirmed yeah i know how long it's been more fake made up drama and your girl is over it. Like I said, I've been doing this for over an hour and I'm tired, it's late. So Cheyenne is in the other room and she can hear them arguing. And she says, we're all in one house on one floor and these walls are a little thin. And Sean said, you are literally the one that said that to Jade. Jade's sitting here trying to say Cheyenne said it. Something's really wrong with you, Jade. And what I really think, I think that you're feeling guilty for airing out your laundry. Sean keeps saying to her, you said it, I didn't. And that's how the show ended. Sean leaving pissed off from the room anyway guys thank you so much for watching my channel make sure you like comment and subscribe and i'll talk to you guys in the next video bye